What's up guys, welcome back. Today we are covering server sent events. This is essentially a stream of multiple responses from the server. So this is what it looks like. The client will send a request to the server and then the server will respond with data. We've seen this cycle a thousand times already, but the difference is that the server keeps the connection open and keeps sending more data over time until the connection is closed. Server sent events are initiated by the client. Basically, this means we're going to make an HTTP request to an endpoint, but it can be closed by either the client or the server. Here are some real life use cases of server sent events. You could have a stock market tracker. So when you go to Google and type in Google stock, if the market is open, it will keep sending you updates, giving you the latest stock prices. Weather apps could use a server sent event like a Doppler radar. So you open the app, you look at the weather in Florida, and every two seconds it sends you the latest rainfall. You could also use this with live sports updates. So every time a team scores, it sends you the information immediately. So in today's video, we're going to expose an endpoint and establish a connection with a server sent event, and then simulate it with a for loop and thread.sleep. Okay, let's get started. Let's start off by creating a new package. I'm going to name it SSE, and then a new Java class also named SSE. We annotate it with at rest controller, and let's expose a new get mapping at slash SSE. Public, this is going to return an SSE emitter. Let's now instantiate a new SSE emitter object and return it. Next up, let's create a new thread to handle adding more data over time. So new thread, inside of our thread, we're going to have a for loop and we're just gonna iterate from zero to five. And then for each iteration, we're gonna say emitter.send and then SSE emitter.event.data. And then we're just gonna say number and then print out the I value of the for loop. And then we will thread.sleep for 1.5 seconds. This can throw an exception. So let's wrap it in a try catch block. And that's all we need for this basic example. Go ahead and run your project. So making our way over to Postman, we have a new request, a get request at slash SSE. And when we click send, we can see we are connected. And then every 1.5 seconds, it prints out the new number. Now this connection is still open. To close it, I can click the close button. And then we get the message connection closed. So in this case, we closed it from the client. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.